If you got a chance, take it. Take it while you got the chance. If you got a dream, chase it because dreams won't chase you back. Hi, I'm Kristen Ostrander from Music That Inspires, and today we are going to talk about Till You Can't by Cody Johnson. I absolutely love this song for so many reasons. This song has so much lyric that's so impactful if you've ever lost someone specifically, spending time. It, it talks about all the different things. Of course, you can listen to it. It's Till You Can't. Our artist is Cody Johnson, written by uh, Benjamin Stennis and Matthew Rogers, and the opening line there. That's part of the chorus that, that I just read to you. And it's such an impactful text. If you just separate lyrics sometime from music, which I hate doing, but I love lyric as part of the song, it really is talking about thinking about what you're doing with your time. Because we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised that we'll have one more day, one more time one more chance. We'll do it some other time. We're really busy. We have a busy calendar. Specifically moms out there, just letting you know, we're busy, right? We have so many things on our to-do lists that we don't often pause and think about, when's the last time I called my mother or father or my best friend? When's the last time I sat down and had an intentional conversation or an activity with someone I really care about? Because another part of the song is, and remember, all the songs are linked into our podcast and also in our show notes and then on our Spotify playlists. So make sure you check out Music That Inspires on Spotify and we'll add all these songs there. So if you haven't heard it, I almost want to pause here. I'm not, for musical rights and licenses and everything, I'm not allowed to play songs on here, but you guys can go and listen to that. But I just wanted to dive deep into this if you've heard it and have been impacted by that. One of the lines, it says, Take that phone call from your mama and just talk away because you'll never know how bad you want to until you can't someday. And yeah, I get a little emotional when I read that. My mother, bless her heart, still living, but my father passed away many years ago. And that is so true. As I go through life in different stages of the time, getting older, I wish I could call my dad and ask him about What's it like to be 43 and have <laughs> grown children? <laughs> I would love to sit at his feet and just ask more questions about health, about his childhood, about his life, about his faith, about different things. And so this song is not just about seizing the day with people you love. Goes through the next one and talks about you'll get up to bait and cast a line with your father or fixing up that old car with your grandfather or whatever it is that you'll get around to. It The song really speaks to seizing the moment now. We're not promised tomorrow. Don't wait on tomorrow because tomorrow may not show. Say your sorries, say your I love yous because you never know. And that's not, although this is, the song really talks a lot about that. It's also about if you've got a chance, take it while you've got the chance. And we have way more chances than we think, but we let a lot of things step in our way. Busyness of life. Y'all, if I've learned anything recently, it's that we all have a lot of balls we're juggling in the air, right? We have to just figure out which ones are made of glass and which ones are made of rubber that can bounce and bounce back. What are the most important things to you? And are you aligning your time and your calendar with those things? Songs like this just allow us to be inspired and to be challenged, honestly, because this is actually very challenging. If we really take stock of our calendars, we really realize that we don't make a lot of time for the things that really are or what we say are deeply important to us. If your faith is deeply important to you, how much time do you spend with God? How much time? Look at your calendar. Now, we can't predict the future, right? That's the message of this. You never know. We're not promised tomorrow. That is very biblical as well. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We have today. People don't live forever. We don't live forever. So back to the, the chorus of this song, if you've got a chance, take it. If you've got a dream, chase it. Because dreams won't chase you back. You can have all the dreams in the world. 
You can even make a plan for the dreams. But if you don't actually take action with those dreams and take those chances, you'll never know. And all you've got is today. What are you going to do today to get closer to a dream that you have? Did you know that your dreams are God-given? They are rooted in your purpose. They are rooted in God's purpose for you. They don't come from nowhere and nothing. Have you ever met someone that's the complete opposite of you and you have some dreams and goals and ideas of things you want to pursue and that person and know another person that would absolutely crumble under that? See, my sister and I are very opposite. And so I always use her as an example here. I am obviously a podcaster, a speaker, a writer, a teacher, a trainer, always in front of people, very much of a people person, very extroverted. That would be my sister's worst nightmare. She is an accountant. She's very number based. She's very like introverted, what prefers behind the scenes, doesn't want to be seen or heard just to blend into the background and that sort of thing. Very much of an observer, a thinker, a numbers kind of person. So one man's dream, one woman's dream, is someone else's nightmare, right? These things are God-given. We were created by God to do good works that he has prepared for us in advance to do Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works for which he has prepared beforehand that we might walk in them. Ephesians 2, 10. Prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. Another word there that other versions use, I usually read from the ESV, but other versions say we are his masterpiece, his handiwork. Think about it. Have you ever created something? Your handiwork, your masterpiece? That's what God says about you. And he created us for good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. He knows you. He made you. He gave you those dreams. They are part of your God-given purpose. They're part of that. So the dreams that you have, they're not just, oh, by chance, by some sort of fleeting idea. No, they are created good works for you to do. If you have that desire to chase a certain thing, that is rooted in your purpose. We have to discover that and unfold that and ask God, what do you have for me? Now, I'm not talking here about magic genie Jesus, right? Where a lot of people think, oh, just Psalm 37, 4, right? It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Does that mean, Lord, I'm delighting in you. Let me win the mega millions, right? That's not what it means. That's the magic genie Jesus everyone wants to say. This is not a genie lamp where you rub and you get three wishes and you can get whatever you want. He says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And what happens when we start to delight in the Lord is that the desires of our heart sometimes shift and change. They shift and change direction over time. And did you know we're not always all in the same season all the time, right? There's seasons of life that come and go. There's change is always around us. So as we delight in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. And a lot of times the desires of our heart change over time. And they are molded and crafted into what God wants them. And we end up wanting what he wants. As we become more like Jesus in our walk with faith and our walk with him, our desires start to shift. Think about it. Just think about yourself 20 years ago. If you were... Just for those of you guys that aren't Christian, this is just all of my ideas here are biblically based. That's where I live from. That's where my all of my faith and my my everything <laughs> comes from this wellspring. And so um, I think of 20 years ago in my own faith and where I was then and what I desired then to where as I moved and changed through seasons, what I love and desire now is different and in a lot more alignment with what God wants. Now, remember something. Remember Jeremiah 29, 11, we just read this. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. God does not hear with a punitive finger pointed at you, ready to snuff you out at every mistake. The dreams that you have, he doesn't want to squash them. But sometimes 
when we have dreams and they don't come to pass, even if we work hard and we go for it and we do take all the chances that we need to take, sometimes those dreams don't come to pass because God has something better for you beyond that. Better. In an upcoming episode, I'm going to discuss another Cody Johnson song that talks a lot about that. Y'all, you, you ever heard my book? It's called Dream Big, Step Small. I am a dreamer, but I'm also an action taker because if you got a dream, chase it because dreams won't chase you back. You have to take action and move towards that. And the first thing that you have to take action on is accepting that there's nothing wrong with your dreams even if they're big and scary and lofty and way beyond anything you can ask or think. That's in the scripture as well. God is able to do far more than you can ever ask or think. And if he gave you that dream, he is faithful to complete the work in you to see it to fruition. But it requires participation. It re requires taking a chance. See, what prevents us from taking those chances? Fear. Doubt lies from the enemy. Does God say, hey, I'll give you every single thing that you ever want if you just you pray real hard and believe real hard? No. Oftentimes, we don't know what's best for us. That's why we can trust a God who loves us immensely and knows exactly what is best for us because he made us fearfully and wonderfully made psalm 139 he knows he's acquainted with all of our ways i love psalm 139 you have searched me and know me when i sit down when i rise up you discern my thoughts from afar you know my path my lying down you're acquainted with all of my ways even before is a word is on my tongue behold lord you know it all together you held me, you hem me in behind and before you lay your hand upon me most of the time people in 139 psalm 139 go right to verse 14 i praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made wonderful are your works my soul knows it very well before you, your eyes, in verse 16, this is how it finishes. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days in, of my life were formed for me before there was even one of them. So what do we know here? What do we know? The God of the universe, the God, the creator God has created one of you. You're the only one of you. He knows you. He made you. He has a purpose and a plan for you to give you a hope and a future. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't come out with bullet point written instructions of, hey, Kristen, go here and do this thing. Hey, here, go do this thing. Follow this instruction. But there are many instructions. And they're all for our greatest good. When he says do not, it's his protection. When he says go and do, it's his provision. It's his living out his purpose for us. So when he puts it in your heart to write a book or create a piece of art or go speak to that person, he knows you before there's a word even on your tongue. So those dreams that you have, they're rooted in God's purpose. You don't squash them or squelter them. Instead, look inside and see what does God have for me? Why do I have this dream and what can I do about it? Because he's asking you to contribute to his kingdom. That's why he made you. You have something amazing and unique to bring to the world that only you can bring. And he has given that in you. You have to take the chances, though. You have to take that chance. Step out in faith and stop letting fear. Oh, worries and wonders. Oh, she did this before. So many other people are doing the same things that I maybe want to do. And what about it? And what about it? Sure, there could be thousands of other women doing what you're aspiring to do right now. But guess what? There's only one of you. You can only bring to the table what you're required to bring to the table. So there could be 10,000 other people doing the exact same thing you're maybe trying to accomplish. And I say, what about it? 
God has a specific plan for you, a specific purpose. The plans and your steps are established that you would walk in them to do good things. Who are you to question if God put that dream in you? Go get it. He knows the plans he has for you. So taking those chances and taking those risks, because fear is oftentimes what holds us back. We have a dream, but we don't think it's possible. It seems the impossible. Do you know that God is the God of impossible? Look around, read the stories, ask of people. The most interesting question sometimes for me to ask people is, how have you seen God show up today? Because he's there. He's all around, always with us all the time. He's showing up all the time. The question is, are you seeing him? Are you asking yourself, where is God in this moment? Even in the most difficult of times. We don't always get to know why, but we get to know who. And when we know the who behind the why, the why tends to not matter as much. That trust comes. The trust comes when we know who we're dealing with. The one that holds all the power and all the grace. All the love, all the hope, all the promises. See, sometimes what holds us back those God-given dreams are the ones that scare us the most because they're only possible when God steps in and shows up and does it for us or with us. The impossible. It's not faith if we can see it, right? Was it Hebrews 11? Faith is the assurance of things not seen. It takes faith when we can't see it, when we don't know that next step. And y'all, this comes from years of experience, right? God recently asked me to step out in faith in, in a way that scared me to the point where I actually wrestled with him for two years before I was like, okay, yeah, I, I guess I'm going to step out in this faith. The unknown scares us. We want to go back to Egypt. <laughs> we want to go back to what's comfortable, even if it's not what we want, because it feels comfortable. Uncomfortable is easy, easier than uncomfortable. We have to have that deep-rooted sense that he knows us, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, unique, different than anyone else. There's a reason even our fingerprints cannot be duplicated. We all are unique in its own way, and we have the God of the universe telling us, I made you. I created you. All of those dreams, all of those hopes, all of those desires, they're for you. What are you going to do about it? Taking action. God is a God of action. He's a creator God. He creates. Your desire to create anything, whether it's art or music or a film or writing a book or creating, baking bread, like whatever you're creating, that comes from the Lord. He is the creator. And he said, we are made in his image. We are born to create, to produce, to work. God worked. So anybody out there love their work? Anybody out there hate their work? Maybe that's a sign that you're not fulfilling the dreams and purposes God called you to. Did you get too comfortable? Did you just get complacent? Because you have a job to do. And I don't care if you're 8 or 80. Until you close your eyes in death, you have a plan and a purpose for you. And you can carry that out to the end of your days. What chance are you not taking right now? What chance are you not taking? What dream are you not chasing? Because you're not promised tomorrow. You're not. So what are you going to do about today? What dream will you chase today? What dream will you chase? What's that something burning in your heart right now? That, Gosh, if I could do anything, what would I love to do? What do you love to do? That's your ministry. That could be your job, your vocation. You can't help it. You would do it for fun. You would do it for no money. That's a sign of your purpose. It's a sign of what God has created you to bring into the world. Now, y'all, 
I knew from a very young age, if you listen to a couple of episodes or the intro episode, I gave you a little bit of insight into me and my own musical background and things like that. I always felt I was born with a microphone in my hand. I thought I would have been a singer, a performer, and although I like to sing, I believe this is my calling. This is my calling to share, to teach, to show the word of God, to bring hope, a hug and a slug. That's my specialty, right? I'm not going to let you sit in your comfortability and it's not going to be all sunshines and rainbows. We don't have mag magic genie Jesus. We have the true, the our brother full of grace and truth. A hug and a slug. He does not leave people in their sin. He calls them out of it and gives you a hope. Change is possible. There's hope. There's grace. There's all the good things. It also says his goodness chases after us. Isn't that great? Do you know, I, I just <laughs> think of chasing the ice cream truck when I was a kid. It was like, like it came around once a day and I could scrape up enough pennies. And like, I think the popsicle I really loved was like 75 cents or something back in the day. And I remember chasing after the ice cream truck. Wait for me, right? I just have that image in my head of God chasing after us with goodness. You ever left your takeout box at a restaurant and a waitress like runs after you? Just like, oh, ma'am, ma'am, you forgot your box. That's me all the time. <laughs> and I'm so thankful because usually I have my half my food and I'm like, oh, this is tomorrow's lunch. So I'd have been super sad to get all the way home and realize tomorrow's lunch or, or later on snack is like still at the restaurant. So if you ever had anyone chasing after you with something that you forgot or something good, that is God. He's chasing after you saying, I've got what you need. I've got goodness to pour out onto you. Stop running the other way. <laughs> you can't chase someone who's not running, right? So if, I, if you're just standing there waiting to receive God's goodness, he has nothing but goodness to pour out on you. That doesn't mean that we won't have trials and tribulations. Can I get an amen? Life is short and full of trouble, and we understand that. But with God's promises, we can walk through them knowing that if this dream somehow seems to be crumbling, it's because he has something better in the new season for you. Something better. Years ago, we tried and tried and tried and tried to save our home from foreclosure and did absolutely everything we could, and still the answer was no. And in that moment of devastation and thinking, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? How can this be your plan, God? The waiting, the holding, the realizing he had something better just around the corner. That's true for you as well, no matter what you're walking through. And what does he call us to do? Take the chances. Take the chances. You know, there's wisdom in many counselors. We don't take the chances of jumping off the cliff without the parachute and going, catch me, God. Do not put your Lord to the test, right? But there's a lot of instructions that he gives us. Be diligent. Work hard. Be kind. Be honest. Do the work you're called to do. Do not fear. 365 times we're told not to fear. What can man do to me if God is for me? Who can be against me? The one that holds all the control, all the power, all the resources, all the goodness, all the grace, all the everything you need is on your side. Calls you friend. Calls you child. Calls you beloved. How's your connection with him? That's the challenge. If you've got dreams, chase them. Because they won't chase you back. Take action. God is a God of action, y'all. Take the chances. Walk in faith. Take that one next step. If you have no idea what that looks like, get my book, Dream Big, Step Small. It's on Audible. You can get a soft cover copy on my website or even on Amazon. And it's step-by-step -step action steps. Y'all, I'm an action step person. I, I'll, I'll, I want you to be inspired. I want you to be motivated, but I want to say, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Because we're not just to be hearers only. We are to be doers. And honestly, the truth is your dreams will always stay dreams until you put them into action. And that can be the smallest action every single day. But having the faith to know 
that you're fearfully and wonderfully made for a purpose, on purpose, prepared in advance for you to do from a God who wants to prosper and give you a hope and a future. Because when you're doing kingdom work, ain't nothing going to stop you. And that could be in your accounting firm. That could be the gas station clerk. Whatever you're called to, we still have dreams and hopes inside of you. What are they? Explore them. Explore what, what, what's standing in your way. And if you need help, reach out. I am a success coach and I would love to walk you through that. To walk you through that. And to give you some strategies and action steps to carry out whatever mission God has called you to carry out in your life. So take some notes from Cody Johnson. Chase those dreams. Seize those moments. Call your mom. <laughs> Always call your mom. I realize how much important this is when my my one of my children has moved out and I realize how much I miss her and how we need to now be more intentional because we're not just passing in the halls. And as my dad passed away and I, I can't do anything about ever calling him again, just take note of this song. Let it burn within you of those dreams and those chances that you might be holding you back or those conversations that need to be had, even the hard ones, because we're not promised a tomorrow. All we have is today and right now. What action will you take? What dream will you chase? Till you can't. Until you can't. Until your eyes close in death, that's when you can't. That's when you can't. So do it until you can. Until you can't anymore. This has been an amazing time with you. Y'all, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. And if some reason Cody Johnson would be listening and would want to jump on and talk about this song and about his dreams and especially about some of the documentary that he did and all that. Full invite. I'm here. Chase those dreams. That's one of mine. To talk to every artist about their the songs that have been inspiring and ask them what other dreams they're chasing. I, you see the questions, right? So I'm chasing dreams. You're chasing dreams. We all have a purpose and a work to do. So get to it.